Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, it's Rosette. I have definitely mentioned in the past, whether it was through my Instagram stories, my Instagram posts, YouTube, going to Skidmore, I've never really sat down and talked about my experience there. So today I wanted to speak about my experience at Skidmore. I am a senior this year, I have one more semester left, and I am very excited to have my degree in business. I am not minoring in anything, but I have a lot of credits in French and anthropology. And I wanted to talk about the truth about Skidmore, the party scenes, the academics, the social life, so all that, and to really just, you know, unpack it. But I am talking about it from my perspective as a black female who is from the Northeast. Everyone's experience is gonna be different depending on what identities you hold. So I can really only speak from my experience, so just remember that when you're watching. I just wanna talk about what I have witnessed in my last three and a half years. The first question I get asked a lot about is, why did you choose Skidmore? So a little bit of background. Also, I have my computer down here, so I keep glancing down at my lap, that's why. I was a senior in high school, I went to a boarding school, and I was looking for a liberal arts college. I wanted something small, I wanted to know my professors, but I was very confused. There's so many colleges nowadays, and the application process can be a bit confusing, overwhelming. And I applied to 15 schools, I did 30 essays, I spent a month writing out my essays. I applied to Wesleyan, Pitzer, to Wake Forest, Barnard, College of William and Mary. I applied to University of Virginia, I applied to a school in Austin, Texas. That's just a few that I remember, but I really did apply to a very broad range of schools. Most of them are less than 10,000, but they're across the United States, so it was from California to Maine. I did have a lot of schools, and I was gonna go to the school that gave me the most financial aid. After I was waitlisted to my favorite school, which was Barnard, I really wanted to be in the city, and that's where I imagined myself being. I kind of took a step back and looked at my options. I also really wanted to go to Wake Forest. I love the idea of Greek life being in the South. But Skidmore did reach out, offered me a chance to come visit and spend the weekend there. And I did, and I stayed with a senior in her apartment, and I had a great time. I really liked the people I met. Everyone was very friendly. I liked the campus. I decided to go with Skidmore because they did offer me the most financial aid, and also because of my stay at Skidmore. So the second question I get asked a lot is, was it hard to make friends? I will say, definitely do the orientations. That really helped me make friends. I did a pre-orientation in the Adirondacks for three to four days. A lot of the friends I have today I made through that program. If you're not able to do a pre-orientation because you have other things going on in the summer and you can't attend, you can still make friends, obviously. I made friends through the pre-orientation, but also made some of my closest friends through my classes. Also, your residence halls are a great way to make friends. Honestly, I've made a few friends just from living in the same dorm as them, and freshmen are usually placed in Wilmarth, Penfield, or McClellan, and so that's in South Quad. You're gonna see, there's gonna be a lot of other freshmen can make friends through dorm meetings, through just like living on your floor. These are predominantly freshman sophomore spaces for underclassmen but I will say Skidmore is clicky it is very clicky I feel like most schools might be clicky but for a small school of 2500 it does sometimes feel like everyone has already formed their groups and it's hard to get into their groups and it can be annoying at times people are very stuck in their friend groups but if you put yourself out there you can definitely do it join clubs join things that you enjoy and you'll find other like-minded people do you think I have a shot at Skidmore I get this question a lot and and it is becoming a more competitive school. The acceptance rate when I applied was like 35 and now it's less than, you know, like 28 or something like that. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but it definitely has been dropping the last few years and getting more competitive. Do not get hung up on the acceptance rate. Do not get hung up on your SAT scores or on your GPA. I don't understand how college counselors do it and how it works out exactly, but I do know the schools that I really wanted to go to that I thought I would get into, I got denied from. It was the complete opposite. They're trying to fill in these quotas in a way, like they need a certain amount of people from the Northeast. They might need a guy that plays the trumpet and you know, X, Y, and Z. It's very specific specific to what they need so you don't know and I just want to say shoot your shot apply if you are thinking about it because you'll never know if you never do it also Skidmore doesn't have an essay an extra essay which is amazing which makes the process so much easier to apply I think it was the easiest school that I applied to Wake Forest had seven or eight supplemental essays Skidmore had zero if you are thinking of applying they do look at all parts of your application so they'll look at your essay on your common app they'll look at what type of extracurricular activities you do they'll look at your grades, things like that, and it's kind of more about you as a whole. I did not submit my SAT scores, I didn't have to because 
they had made a test optional and I'm not an international student. My friends who had amazing test scores, they sent them in, but for me, I was like, I definitely did not test well. I applied to mostly test optional schools. That was something that was a big deal for me because I knew that my test scores did not show who I was as a person and how I would academically do in college. Okay, so let's talk about the social life. There is no Greek life. Like I said, I wanted to go to Wake Forest because I wanted Greek life. Skidmore has none of that. The closest thing you'll get to Greek life at Skidmore is going to be a sports house, like a lacrosse house or a hockey house. And those are just typically upperclassmen who live in a house near campus. It is definitely a bar school. People usually pre-games and then will go out. There are things happening in the apartments. Most of the time, I would say it definitely leads downtown and downtown is only five to 10 minute drive. It's very close. And all I can say about that is use your best judgment, be smart, um, and be safe. Saratoga Springs is definitely an interesting place to go out. It does have a lot of bars. It is a safer city. I've honestly walked home after going out many times. I would never do it alone, but it only is a 25 minute walk. So on a nice night when it's warmer, my friends and I have gone downtown and we'll walk home, but don't go by yourself. And as for Saratoga Springs, it's known for its horse racing and you know, people coming up to watch that. It's an older demographic that comes up, usually in the summer, so you're not really that. It is a very beautiful town. There's amazing restaurants. It's definitely a cute town. It's a more conservative town. So let's talk about diversity. How diverse is it? Skidmore is not that diverse. They are working on it like every other small liberal arts college. Most students do come from the Northeast. It is a predominantly white school and I really see that in my classes. Not really when I'm walking around in the dining hall, but in my classes I might be the only person of color. There are specific clubs that you can join and spaces like the multicultural space that promotes diversity and different cultures. How is the food at Skidmore? The food is honestly really good. I cannot complain. I know people after two years of eating it will be upset and say it's awful, but I genuinely have never had an issue with the food. If you live in the dorms, you have to have a meal plan. So usually freshmen and sophomores will have a meal plan. You'll just swipe in. You can swipe in as many times you want. It's unlimited, which is honestly kind of scary because that's how I gained the freshman 15. You can swipe in, get your meal. We only have one dining hall, but there are a lot of options. There's a pasta bar. They have a vegetarian section, a diner section with more like typical American foods, like a sandwich section. I'm forgetting a few, but they do have options when it comes to food. I was vegetarian. My freshman year. I have friends who are vegan. They've never really had too many issues. But there are protein substitutes and salad bar and it's not just your basic like romaine lettuce. They do have a thing called late night. So around 7.30 or 8 p.m. They switch the foods from like regular dinner to like more snacky, more greasy types of foods. So I'll have like chicken tenders, waffle, quesadillas, and it's a great time to see your friends, to catch up, take a break from homework. Okay, so for the weather, it is upstate New York, so it is cold. I'm not gonna lie. It can be freezing. You need to make Make sure you have a good coat only warm the first month and like the last month it gets warm for two weeks before you end school and the worst months are january and february and the days do get short in the winter so you'll have sun until like 4 30 p.m is it affordable it is an expensive college they do provide financial aid depending on what your family's circumstances are skidmore is also not need blind they do look at how much your family makes before they admit you to the university but that being said they do provide financial aid you can definitely talk to the financial aid people they are so nice. I have called random times emails. They are always really on top of it. What is there to do in Saratoga? Ah, uh, okay. And you can go out to restaurants. If you have a car or if your friend has a car, you can drive to the river and it's beautiful. It's the Hudson. Just enjoy the day there. Like in the fall, my friends and I went apple picking or pumpkin picking. There's a bus that Skidmore pays for your transportation fee. So you can go and use it and just get downtown really easily. There's also the Tang Museum. You can go visit. But in general, yeah, they don't have that many options. So I usually just hang out with my friends or, you know, you can go to the movies. I've actually never done that, but you could go to the movies. How is housing at Skidmore? Okay, so there are dorms and there are apartments and you can live off campus. So dorms, it's two to three people. They have these really cute window seats, which you can see pictures of, I believe, on Skidmore's website. You can't as a freshman, but when you're older, you can get an apartment, which is on campus. They are these awesome two to three to four bedroom spaces. Um, so they have a kitchen, a living room, a dining room, queen size bed in most of them. You basically live in your own tiny townhouse and it is great, but they are more expensive, which I didn't know about. The price for the dorms are less expensive, but then you have a meal plan that you're paying for, and then the apartments are more expensive. Skidmore says that it actually balances out because you're grocery shopping, so you're not using the meal plan when you're in the apartments, so that the costs are the same. I personally don't think that's true. I think you do spend more in the apartments because now you have 
grocery shopping that you're budgeting as well as furniture and things for the apartment in general but that is just one thing to keep in mind also no matter where you live it takes like five ten minutes to walk anywhere on campus it's nothing like Syracuse or a big school I could get to my friends rooms within two to three minutes usually so Skidmore is very small and regardless of where you're living I think the longest I've walked is probably ten minutes to get to class and that would be like the furthest building so it's very small campus do you have athletics okay yes we have athletics because we don't have football which a lot of universities and colleges do we also are d3 as for the gym like the only thing that's annoying is the the space that the athletes work out is the same space that everyone else works out so it can just be jammed packed before covid like it was insane how many people could be in the gym and it can be a little bit overwhelming when you have a whole lacrosse team or a whole basketball team in the gym and you're trying to work out and there's so many people using the equipment it's a very small space i know my sister's school she goes to loyola university in maryland and they have a space just for the athletes but they are d1 and that's why how do i stand out to skid more okay so be yourself like i said be authentic because they don't need two ashley's they don't need two sam make sure your essay is strong write about what you're passionate about i wrote about a haircut but it showed them who I was, I talked about my family in it and my upbringings and my cultural ties all through a haircut. So it really can be any subject, but just make it very unique to yourself. Two things I wanna talk about, this video called Go Beyond the Brochure. It's a YouTube video, it talks about a few different aspects of Skidmore. I did watch this video when I applied to Skidmore. I wanted to know more about people's experiences and there was nothing except for this video. When he was talking in the video, it sounded very cheesy and I didn't know if he was being serious or not. So I just wanna to touch upon all those aspects that he mentions in the video, whether they're true and if they are true, how much truth do they hold? He talks about the red side versus the blue side. So yes, Skidmore does have a red side and a blue side. The way they designed our dining hall is that they actually split it through the middle and painted one side of it red and one side of it blue and athletes tend to sit on the blue side people who are more into the arts sit on the red side and yes that is true you can obviously sit wherever you want to sit but when i look around it usually tends just to be that way and i do think that's because there are bigger tables like that can fit seven to eight people on the blue side where the tables on the red side are smaller so a lot of the athletes after going to practice will sit on the blue side because it can accommodate their whole team and on the red side you have smaller tables so it ends up being that a lot of the kids who are into the arts or theater sit on that side I don't know exactly why they designed it this way why it's so divided it's because within the dining hall it gets even more specific as to who sits where whether you're an international student whether you're you know involved in certain types of clubs like it gets very specific I've sat everywhere in the dining hall if you want to sit on one side or the other side it does not matter no one's gonna think it's weird oh the other subject he talks about is spa and yes spa is not an actual spa which I thought it's where you buy food they've actually updated everything so during the day it's sandwiches and more like soups things like that and then you can study outside of spa and upperclassmen do tend to study there on the weekends at night they'll open it up and you can just get like greasy foods like chicken tenders cheeseburgers fried foods and it's open till 2 a.m on the weekends and there is a roommate questionnaire i do not think they take into account what you say i've had friends who just live with people who are completely opposite to them even though they did fill out the application so i'm not really sure exactly how it works but my freshman roommates were nothing like me except for the fact that we put down we were clean so i guess that was good in the video he talks about the ratio for men and women that is so true Skidmore is about 60 40 the women outnumber the men I see that in my classes I've had classes with one boy in it I've had classes with only two boys in it because I'm a business major I tend to have a lot more males in my classes but that is not true for most of the majors that is also very true in the hookup sense because of a gender ratio there are more options for guys just because there's so many more women if you were looking for a heterosexual relationship it did start off as an all women's college so there were no males at all but the ratio is definitely very real and the last point i want to touch upon is just is skidmore worth it because of the covid i hope that you know if you guys are watching this in a few years from now it's back to normal and that's not really a problem it is an expensive college and an expensive decision I think it's great because I wanted a small school I wanted my teachers to know me by name and I got that experience at Skidmore but the social aspect of it has changed a lot because of COVID so I guess I just want to talk about what my experience was like with COVID so Skidmore did open up for classes I had half my classes in a tent and I had half my classes online and so with the classes in the tent my professor he allowed students to either stay home and do it online by zooming in or you could come to class and learn in a tent and he had a microphone um, so when I got colder, I didn't usually attend. I would do it online, not in person. For my online classes, I will say it was more convenient for me to attend, but I did not learn as much, especially for my math type of class. It was harder for me 
to really, you know, retain the information. I like being in person for that. As for the social aspects, all types of events were canceled on campus. All that was like virtual or didn't happen. And I think that takes away from meeting friends and also just like the experience at Skidmore. As for testing, we had to get tested weekly and we had an app we had to show if we went into a building that would show our test results. They did pay for students who were traveling out of state or internationally to quarantine in a hotel. Yes, that was a very hard process. I have friends who did it and it was extremely hard being quarantined for two weeks in a hotel. But when we got back to campus, there weren't that many cases. So we were able to start off the academic year and those people with cases were quarantined. As for visiting friends, we weren't allowed to go into friend spaces or visit each other. There were like snitch accounts. If people thought that you were not respecting the school's rules, they would take pictures of you, send it to an account supposedly and have you um, get points or in trouble. We have a point system. It created an environment that was a little bit more uneasy, a little bit more toxic. I just want to say I did pick Skidmore. I made amazing friends that are lifelong friends. I learned so much. The business department is amazing. It pushed me, especially for a small liberal arts college that is so unique. I was able just to have a lot of great work experience, internship experiences through Skidmore. I cannot complain about that. I'm very grateful for the time I did have there. Any questions I didn't answer, definitely feel free to leave a comment. If you enjoyed this video, if you found it helpful, definitely give it a thumbs up. Good luck with the college application process. I know it can feel hectic and overwhelming, but it is worth it. It will work out. You will be in the place that you're supposed to be. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video. You got the summertime love. I work for your heart all night to the dawn. You stay when they switch stars. I know you're the one. They go and they come. You like the summer breeze. Spot in the evening, got a life and a pop for the weekend. Girl, I said you're the one, and I made that. I made that. I told my baby. We